for minority women, it's, it's looked down upon because we're the workers. But for Caucasian women, it's expected. It's expected that they should be able to or should desire to be a stay-at-home parent and homeschool their children like I do. But mm-hmm. for minority women, particularly black women and, and, and Latino women, you know, we're the workers. We're the, we're, we're the caretakers of other people, not our own families. Because if we want to be that one that stays home and takes care of our family, well, then she's lazy. She, she, she wants to be a welfare queen. Mm-hmm. That's think, the attitude. Where do you think that notion came from? For questions, comments, and to show your support, visit us on the web at afroempath.com. I generally ask just a, a kind of a, our guest to give me a brief background of their story because like us empaths are all scattered throughout the, the world. You know what I'm trying to say? Uh-huh. So let's see. I, I can't think of a time where I didn't know that I hate to use, you know, I hate to use the word different because there's always a negative connotation to that. But for lack of a better term, I'll say that. Okay. Um, I've always known that. I can't really think of a time in my life where I didn't know that. And, you know. You're, um, an, you're an INFJ, correct? Correct. Oh, yeah. Sounds about right. Um, and, you know, and especially, you know, a child, you know, you know, growing up in New York City, you know, in the Bronx, you're kind of you know, you're, you, the environment that you're in, or really any environment, but especially an environment like that, it doesn't really support someone who is that way, someone who is highly sensitive. Yeah. And, um, you know, I always found that um, it was very difficult for me to sort of, you know, come to terms with that. And I found myself acting outside of myself for most of my life. And... Um, what do you mean by that? Give me an example, sister. Not being who I was, being something that, being something that I, put it like that. But give me an example, like you're hanging out with the wrong crowd of people, or you just, I'm trying to say, like, give me, give me an example, a tangible example that I can understand. Okay. Not necessarily hanging out with the wrong crowd, but acting in a way that I thought that black girls are supposed to act. Okay. That stereotypical sort of, you know, the stereotype. You had, you were, you were in a kind of a hive mind of what you thought black, a black person should be, you're saying. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And again, that's, that's mostly what I saw around me, you know, and the reason why I had done that is because I remember at a very young age being bullied a lot in school. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was constant and sometimes it was little microaggressions, but anything that people would do to let me know that I was different and funny because the teachers that I had as well at the time, they were all white and I would even experience these things from the teachers. And I later understood later on in my life is because I didn't fit the stereotypical profile of a little black of a of a black girl from the Bronx. Yeah, they're pro- they're probably intimidated because you were you dared to think different, and that scares them. You know, I I dare to think different, and you know, not to toot my own horn, but no, it's all good. I was smarter. Yeah, let's just face it. I mm-hmm. was smarter than them, and most Absolutely. of the kids in the class. Absolutely. So, you know, that's something that I had struggled with my entire life, and then um, I met my I met my husband at a pivotal point in my college career. Mm-hmm. And I came out of my shell, so to speak. I came out of my shell and I began to, you know, be, be um, more social. And I began to feel comfortable being myself, yeah. being who I was. Understood. I, I want to talk about that re- just briefly about like, because uh-huh. um, no, I, I grew up in the, in the country basically, but I, but there was a brief, I had a brief stint where I lived in the, the uh, like, I guess like the city of Connecticut, you know, of, and uh, it was all it was all black and Puerto and you know and Latino. It was all black and Puerto Rican. There was no, not even single one white person in the school. I don't believe at all. Um, right. And I noticed while I was in there, it was a culture shock for me. You know, they would call, they would call each other nigga, and even the teachers nigga. And there was police in the school, and terrible. It, they, it, it was it was like a culture of children actually suppressing the intelligence of other children. And the image say so. It was like yes. a, a culture of suppressing intelligence because what I realized now is that, um, 
you know, to, to, to know, to know, to have knowledge, uh, equals responsibility. You know what I'm trying to say? Yes. And a lot of black Absolutely. people don't want to take, don't want to have to take that kind of responsibility because with that responsibility comes pain. Absolutely. That makes sense? Because yeah. you tell the truth. Because yes. the t- you tell the truth and the truth hurts. Exactly. But I always tell people truth comes from a place of love. Yep. Lies come from a place of hate. So anybody who lies to you, they can be smiling in your face, patting your back. They can do everything that you could possibly want for you. And they're lying to you. They don't love you. Mm-hmm. But if I tell you the truth, if I put it out there on the table, it's because I know that the truth is best for you. And I'm going to tell you that because I love you. Mm-hmm. But we don't live in that. We we don't live in that society. I don't. I don't. I don't know if we ever will. Well, to we, it's not. I mean, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not under the illusion that this world has ever been perfect, and it was created. It was created as you know. It's created as a way to remind us that this world can. You know, I can put it. This world is a place for us to perfect ourselves and to eventually, through the pain we experience, to realize that we need to submit our will to the will of our creator, you know what I'm trying to say? That's so, right. so we can, so we can return to where we came from a place of true perfection and, you know, f- and free from this duality. But, right. um, let me, let me ask you, so let's, let's, let's move forward here. Like, um, you know, mm-hmm. so you, I saw, I look in your Facebook profile and it says you're a nurse. Yeah. So, I mean, and yes. em- it seems like a lot of empathic, empathic women become nurses or do- doctors or, you know what I'm trying to say, our caretakers in some, some degree. So how, how is that being a nurse and an empath? Like, uh, does that, does it ever get overbearing for you? Absolutely. No, actually it's not. I really, I, I enjoy it. I like, I like taking on that role for people. Um, I feel like it's my duty. When I first became a nurse, um, I would often say that I'm doing God's work. This is what God wants me to do. Mm-hmm. I felt that. And I, and it's so funny. I spoke earlier about fighting myself and fighting who I was for years. I fought that you know, the thought, the thought of ever doing that was, it was a nightmare for me. It was hellish. Um, I, I, if anybody had said, oh, you know, you should become a nurse, you know, my response would be, are you out of your mind? Are you crazy? I'm not doing that. Are you kidding me? No way. And then I, I went through my life. I went to college. I did my undergraduate degree and what I did it in. And it was just not working out for me. It what was, was it in? What was it in? Finance. Oh, <laughs> my God. <laughs> I'm telling you what. It's, it's a long story how I came to that, but needless to say, it was just not working out for me. It was not my world, you know, being being an empath, being an INFJ, and then add to that, I'm a young black female in a white middle-aged male world. Yeah. And they're grooming the other white males my age to be them, but what are they going to do with me? Mm-hmm. You know, I'm an anomaly. Yeah. Um. So... And then many people, you know, are of the school of thought that, well, you know, you shouldn't let that deter you. You should push on, push forward, but push forward for who? I I came to a point in my life where like, you know what? I don't have a damn thing to prove to anybody. I'm just going to be myself. I'm going to be who I am and I'm going to do what God wants me to do. And I'm going to go in the direction that I'm being pushed in. And I, you know, I learned that you and what you said before is so correct. You must submit to the will of God. And what the, and the will of God is obvious. Mm-hmm. If you just stop, look, and listen. Get outside of yourself. Get over yourself and just stop, look, and listen. It's obvious what God is trying to tell you to do. And I said to myself, I need to stop pushing back and push in trying to do the opposite of what God wants me to do. Because ultimately, there's a, there's a saying that the universe self-corrects. Ultimately, you going to do what God wants you to do, whether you like it or not. Now, you could take the easy route and follow the signs and walk the path, or God will force you in that path. Pick one. Exactly. So, yeah. Right. So I learned that. I learned that lesson. Thank that, God. That's good. And I, I think, I think you know, as an empath and an INFJ, I think you have, you had a, um, and you're an introvert. So I think, you know, as introverts, I think we have an easier time submitting to the will of God personally. I don't know. That's just my, my opinion because... Yeah. Like I find, I find a lot of extroverts are seeking the approval of others a lot of times. You know what I'm trying to say, and right. it's like I guess there's a certain there's a certain ego drive that a lot of them are chasing. You know what I'm trying to say. That's right. You said you yes. came, you said you came from a school. You know, you, you, you early on you you know you're surrounded by a certain group think. You know that 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 group think that you're that we're all surrounded by early on. It definitely influences us, and it makes us That's think. Right. It, you know the fact that you thought that 
you know, the thought of being a nurse was something uh, that was probably in your mind beneath you? Yes. Uh, um, the fact that you thought that way was probably part of your early influence in that group think. That's right. Because you're thinking, well, I'm the most intelligent, yada, 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 such and such. I'm trying to say, why, why would I degrade myself in, in such a, a, such a way? I'm trying to say, exactly. and I also, well, I want to say one more thing about that. I also think that's part of living in a white supremacist society that, that does not, we live in a patriarchal society where the, the feminine role, I've talked about this before in the podcast, but the role of a nurturer is not looked at as something, um, it's looked at something um, like to look down upon. You know what I'm trying to say? For certain women. Let's be, for certain women, let's make that distinction because for, for, for minority women, it's, it's looked down upon because we're the workers. But for Caucasian women, it's expected. It's expected that they should be able to or should desire to be a stay-at-home parent and homeschool their children like I do. But mm -hmm. for minority women, particularly black women and, and, and Latino women, you know, we're the workers. We're the, we're, we're the caretakers of other people, not our own families. Because if we want to be that one that stays home and takes care of our family, well, then she's lazy. She, she, she wants to be a welfare queen. Mm -hmm. where, do you think, the where do you think that notion came from? Slavery. Co co colonialism. Mm -hmm. You know? That's what that's where it came from. Because I mean, you know, and, and it's funny, you should huh. Just, I I can say so much on this and I don't wanna I don't wanna, you know, get too ahead of myself. I don't mind, I don't mind. I mean just go just go where the spirit leads you. you know what I'm trying to say if you, whatever's on your heart, let it let it out, you know. Yeah, I mean it comes from it comes from slavery, it comes from a colonialism. This is where it comes from. Hmm. You know, if you are a woman of color. Um, particularly a black or, or, you know, a Latino woman, and you say, you know what, I'm going to stay home and take care of my children. I want to go out and work for anybody else. I'm going to take care of my family. This is what I want to do. Oh, well, she's lazy. She doesn't, she, she doesn't want to work. What's wrong with her? She wants my tax dollars to take care of her and her, her, her 10 children. So are you, saying, are you saying this is pressure that comes from the, the outside white world? Or are you saying that black women themselves have this attitude towards other black women? I'm, 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 help me understand. I, I'm, saying that the, I'm saying that the idea originated in the mindset of the colonialist. Gotcha. And it trickled, not trickled down, but it made its way up to us. Gotcha. That's what I'm saying. Gotcha. Because in... And if you look in, 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 um, in many African societies, it's perfectly reasonable for a mother to not want to go out and work for someone else. She wants to, she wants to take care of her children. And when her children are a little older, she may have a little business on the side. Mm -hmm. She may have a little shop. You know, I know women who, are, who have been you know, stay-at-home mothers and they have small taxi fleets, you know? Mm -hmm. They're in these are industrious women who want to, you know, secure their future and secure their children's future. But their primary focus is their family, you know, and not only is that common, that's expected. Whereas here in the United States, you know, and pretty much in the Western world, that's not that's not the case for black women. The opposite is expected of us. It starts there and it makes our way. It makes it, it makes its way into our, our hearts and minds. And so we begin to take on someone else's think something that is not our own something that is foreign to us let me give you an example mm -hmm. um i was watching a news program and um it was a, a a white female reporter had uh had tried to insinuate that you know for an african woman another child is a financial burden and the woman corrected her and said you know you europeans view a child as a as a liability but for us our children are our wealth you see they just they they just want to keep our numbers down our population down so they can control us basically they don't want you know right you know like what's happening in south africa right now is that there, there is a giant population boom of south african uh like a generation even to say south african millennials and so they're right. wanting to take their land back. It's a big, it's a big thing right now, you know. Yes, I, so, I read about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, 
So, uh huh. Did you want to say something? No, go ahead. I'll let you continue. Oh no, I'm no. If you had something else you wanted to say, I made I made my point already. No, that's cool. I'm not, I'm gl- I'm glad to hear it. You know, it kind of it kind of confirms you know a lot of the things I've talked about. You know, for me, like, um, I just I just think in general, like, the feminine polarity is is like to to be a nurturer. Period is not is not like. I don't know, just to be a mother, you know what I'm saying? Just to be a nurturing mother. It's just something that like, it's, I feel like it's looked down upon period. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, it's just, yeah. I, yeah. And I, and I think, it, I think, I think it, obviously white people don't want, obviously white people want to, would want to depopulate us and, and not, and not have us not have our children healthy, obviously. But I mean, I, I think just like we talked about early with earlier with the, you know, being in a, being, uh, growing up, you know, as differently and r- realizing that black, black, I'm assuming you, you're a girl, so you probably knew other, mostly the black girls growing up, but they have a certain group think, you know, yeah, absolutely. and that, and that group think does not, it's, it's whether they know it or not, they often have drives to be more like white men <laughs> you know what I'm say? than black women. If that makes any sense. Absolutely. And, and, and we are, we are socialized. We're socialized that way. Yeah. That you should want to, you know, you should want to, uh, you know, you know, claw your way to the top of, of corporate America, or you should want to be a doctor. You should want to be a lawyer or engineer. You should want these, you know, lofty white male predominated Bingo. Um, prof- pr- um, professions How? but you know what there's nothing wrong with that and if that's what you want to do then god bless you you go and do that but what i don't like is when the expectation is that if i don't want to do that i am looked down upon yeah, i agree but i'm my, my thing is not even what people think of mm-hmm. me or i should say think of you as women and my thing is mm-hmm. like people have to realize that there, you're sacrificing. So we, I've already had an episode where I talked about uh, black femininity, but I'm saying that you you're sacrificing something. You're giving up something by getting something. You know what I'm trying to say hypothetically, absolutely. yeah, hypo- yeah. Hypo- and you're a very intelligent woman, and you could have absolutely could have right now instead of being a nurse, you could have actually chose to be in a what account you said. Um, I was I was in finance, but you know before that, I decided thought that I wanted to be a doctor, and I thought that I wanted to be an engineer. <sighs> I mean, fact of the matter is that if I wanted to do any of that, I would be doing it right now. But I realized that, you know, I realized that the reason why it wasn't working out for me the way that I wanted it to is because I really didn't want that. It's a, it's against your, your, your nature. So I'm trying to say. Exactly. It's against, right. it's against your nature. I'm just saying that like, yeah, that, that white people's nature, you know what I'm trying to say, like yeah. is different than us. We, we have a holistic nature. So even if, even if we want to be healers, it's not going to be in the same way that they're their healing is structured for us to heal. If we, I'm trying to say. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. When we, we're we're healers. And so we want to heal, you know, so our, our healing is, is, is is, is physical and it's spiritual. It's the whole person. Exactly. Because no separation between the physical and the spiritual. It's all the same. Exactly. So I'm saying that even if you wanted to become a doctor, because I I know I've spoken, I have, I've, you know, in interviews with, they haven't said they're doctors, but I have female doctors that come on here and Mm -hmm. they, are frustrated with, with the healthcare society because, you know, it's, it, it's, it's, it, 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 it's racist towards black people, period. You know what I'm trying to say? It's so they, they, they don't, they don't treat, they don't give black people the same attention that they do white people. And, and it's, and it's, you know, you're just a number in there. And so it's not, it's, it, so I'm saying that even if you, even if you do go through the process of, of getting, you know, your doctorate degree and, 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 and becoming a doctor, you're st- you're still gonna end up frustrated with with the the way things are because you didn't create it. It was not created for you to to succeed. Absolutely. So the thing I'm just point point trying to make is that like there you know there is like um, there is something you're giving up by by getting ahead in a society that was not built for you. That's, that's right. All, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's right. You lose yourself. Exactly. You know, like, the longer the longer we're here and we participate in this, the further away we 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 come we go from ourselves. Yes, exactly. You know, the more separated we are from ourselves and each other. Correct. Now, now this bring, this kind of brings us into the topic that that we wanted to speak about originally. Um, mm-hmm. So, you 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 know you had a post about um, your thoughts about Halloween. Now you're right. you're a mother. You have two children, I believe. Yeah. 
Two young children, yeah. Two young children, gotcha. So I'm, I can only assume that you're not just speaking about it from, you know, in terms of you and you going on, because you're, you're, you don't, I'm assuming you don't go out and do Halloween parties and trick or treat or do, or what? What is it? No, okay. I don't. So I'm assuming that you're, you're researching these topics in terms of, okay, I have two young girls. Do you mind giving their ages or no? Um, one is, one is preschool age and one is school age. Okay. So you're thinking, okay, how you're getting to the point in, as a mother where you're thinking, do I want my children out, you know, dressed up, uh, and going out and doing the things that the majority of her classmates are doing? How is that going to impact her development? If she's forced, if she's, you know, kind of feel, feeling as if she's being pigeonholed or how is it going to affect her if she, if she does do what the rest of the kids are doing? Is that, I'm assuming, is that kind of where your mind was at when you were? My mind, my mind is there and it's somewhere else. Yeah. So on a, on a mundane physical level, I will say, my mind is, is where you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. I don't want my children to be immersed in group think. You know, I don't want my children every year to do what quote unquote everybody else is doing because everybody else is doing it, you know, you know, and, and there's no rhyme or reason to it. You see, and again, mm -hmm. that's part of my nature. I don't do group think. Well, you, 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 you said yourself, you, you came from it and you realized the dangers of it. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I don't do it. I don't, I don't, I don't like it. I don't believe in it. I find it boring. I find it boring to do what everybody else is doing. It lacks originality. Now, this is my opinion. Anybody wants to go trick or treat right now, that's their business. I'm not knocking them. I'm talking about myself. Mm -hmm. Now, on a spiritual level, I was thinking if you look, if you look at Halloween and what it means and how it how it was practiced, you know, from in the earliest times, whenever that was, and then if you look at how parents dress their children up like unclean spirits okay give an example Vampire. of that okay gotcha. Vampires, yeah. yeah demons mm -hmm. ghouls ghosts you know the spirits of the uh, of the restless undead mm -hmm. you might think that it's just a fun holiday but i am a huge believer in you invite upon you what you put out whether you are aware of it or not you invite it upon yourself when you do these things and there are a lot of religions, a lot of religions who believe who who believe this. I mean, I know of some religions, some Christian religions, where, you know, the practitioners are told not to even watch horror movies because me, you invite you invite what you put out there. It's an invitation, I'm, and I'm giving an example of this. And I said this on my Facebook post. Mm -hmm. I know people who have played with Ouija boards. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's just fun. It's no big deal. It's just a game. And they've regretted it. How so? They've had some experiences. They say they they I I I know particularly, and I don't I don't remember this this person's name, but we worked together briefly. And she said that um she and her her sister brother and brother's girlfriend were sitting around one night, and they were playing with a Ouija board. So that they bought it on sale somewhere at some store. I think it was. Kmart or something like that anyway. So they were playing with this Ouija board one night and then all of a sudden things got really strange and the look on her face just changed. She looked, I mean, she literally started to look white like a ghost her face when she was telling me what happened. And she said it freaked them out so much that they just, they literally, they lived in an apartment building. They went and they took the Ouija board and everything and they threw it in the incinerator in the apartment building after they got freaked out that night. And she said to me, girl, let me tell you something. Ever since then, I, you know, I had been living in my mother's apartment all these years. I had never experienced anything. And ever since then, every so often, I would see a shadow or I would just feel really uneasy in that space. She said sometimes she'd go to sleep at night and she swear she'd hear somebody calling her, whispering to her. And she said, listen, I'm not crazy. I'm not this, I'm not that. I don't have any mental illness in my family, but I'm telling you, ever since we did that, strange things have been happening to me. And she says that she's, you know, and I said, and I asked her this question because I'm, I know what can happen. And I said to her, you know, do you feel that your mood has, has, has begun to decline significantly? And she said, she said, you know what, come to think about it. You know, it had, I had a, I had a right, not too long after that, I had a bad breakup with my son's father and my mood just went down. Just, I'm just not the same. 
And I said to her, you know why that happened, right? And she said, yeah. And I said, you need to go for a serious cleansing. You need to cleanse your space and you need a spiritual cleansing and everybody else who was involved in it. You see, so she thought, she thought it was fun and games. She didn't believe in things like that. And then she went and had this experience. How, how old was she when she did that, do you think? Oh, she was a mother. She was, um, let's see, this was about 10 years ago. So I say at the time she was maybe about 25 or 26. Mm -hmm. so she wasn't a young, she wasn't a little, a young kid. She's a grown woman with a kid. Gotcha. You know? And so the point that I was trying to make is that you might think that it's harmless and that it's all fun, but the reality, and but just because you don't believe in something doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. And just mm -hmm. because you don't believe in something doesn't mean that it cannot affect you because it absolutely can. Now, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not, again, not coming on here preaching because I know, you know, people don't like to be preached to and people don't like to hear the truth. So I'm saying, I'm going to say this. If you, that's what you want to do, you go ahead and you do that. But I'm telling you something. It's my nature to share this with you. I can't not say anything. No, I, I, I mean, I, I agree. <laughs> I mean, this, this is the place to talk. I mean, this is the, the forum yeah. that where people like you, we, we talk about the stuff and it's true and it needs to be talked about, yeah. you know, because there are, you know, the, the reason why I create this forum because it's for people like us to be able to speak about these things because they are, they are a reality. And, um, right. it's important that you, that we educate ourselves because not just for ourselves, but for the sake of our children. That's right. You know, absolutely. And it's my nature, you know, it's my nature as a helper yeah. and a healer Correct. to say something about it. Correct. Yeah. Let me, let me ask you this. What, what is, what would you like, what would you say your background's in? Like, you know, if you had to, you know, say in a couple words, like, you know, what your spiritual understanding of this world is. Well, I spent, um, just to give you some brief background, I grew up in church, going to Baptist church. My parents didn't go, but she, but they made sure us kids went. Mm -hmm. um, so I grew up in that. And then I, I actually went to Catholic school for many years. And I found myself, you know, wanted to become a Catholic and praying the rosary and having statues of Mary in my room and all that. And then at one point in my journey, I decided that I had become a born again Christian. Um, and I, how, know, how are you during this? Like, the, give me some, some ages here. Um, all of this started with me at about my awakening, so to speak, um, started when I was about 11. Okay. And then, you know, I did the born again Christian, but for some reason it just didn't, it didn't have the hold on me that I, that I wanted it to have, no matter how hard I prayed, no matter what I did. Mm -hmm. And I, at one point, just to be brief, I came to a point in my life where I decided my, you know, that it's more than that. You know? What do you mean by it? What's, what's more than that? It's more than that. It's more than, you know, uh, uh, the, the books of the Bible and going to church every Sunday mm -hmm. and saying, I believe in Jesus Christ. It's more than that. You're talking about just, just, it's more than just spiritually the speaking, spiritually speaking. Yeah, you're saying it's more, it's more than just the like the the rituals and the just the things that everybody else, everybody else does because they're told to do it. You're saying, right? It's more than Sunday school. It's more than Bible stories. It's more than um, you know a, a saying that was common when I was growing up um, was you know Jesus doesn't like children, little children who lie. You know, it's more than it, it's more than that. Mm -hmm. It's there's a there's a, a, a and it's not outside of myself. Mm -hmm. I, I exist here, but you know what? I exist in the spiritual realm as well. Understood. Yeah. You're beginning to find like the, the deeper, like esoteric meanings behind the, the, the things exactly. that maybe people would just go through. Yeah, exactly. And it was around that time that I met my husband. And how old were you there during, during this time? When I, was 20, I was 20 years old. Gotcha. I was 20 years old and there was, a t well, I was in college and that was around the time that I met my husband. And he really opened my eyes to a lot of where this comes from. Christianity, Judaism, Islam, where it originated from. Mm -hmm. He really opened my eyes to that. And then like, and I, I, I had dream after dream after dream when I first met him involving him, really prophetic dreams. And I said, okay, this is, he's the one, this is, this is going to be my husband. We're going to have, this is who I'm going to spend my life with. I knew it. I knew it almost right away. And, God showed me in dream after dream after dream. 
some were some were literal, some were you know in in, in allegory. But I knew mm -hmm. this was this was what it was going to be. He really opened my eyes and taught me things that I I I, I had no idea of and it all fits it all fit and i said to myself of course of course at this time in my life i would meet him and he'd be the one to teach me these things of course and it just fit you know and that's that's pretty much that's my story oh that's gorgeous <laughs> uh, gives gives me hope <laughs> um so um so are, okay so your children are probably not old enough to, to trick-or-treat i take it yet um yeah they are people take pe people trick-or-treat with their two-year-olds oh okay I, I don't know i'm yeah. not a parent so i don't know how this whole trick-or-treat thing goes <laughs> oh, yeah, i've seen infants out there dressed up with little bags what are they gonna do they can't even eat the candy i mean just i i guess i i guess the fun aspect of it dressing them up as little pumpkins gotcha. or little fairies or whatever understood and so 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 are your children gonna have you have they done it or what never and i don't plan on ever doing it what about your husband what does he think what's your take on it He's he's totally in agreement with me. Gotcha. Yeah. So I mean, would you can would would you and your husband consider yourselves Christians or what would you consider yourself? No. No. So let me ask you this: like, you know, when I went church as a kid, right? Uh -huh. I remember I remember going and then you know knocking door to door and knocking this one door. There are people, there's people in there, but they didn't have they didn't have any candy to give us. They're like, right. oh, we don't celebrate this. I'm like, what? You know. And they gave me like an apple. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> you know? right. and, 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 and they were like, you know, they were Christians. I'm not sure how I knew they were Christians, but they, they probably said, yeah, they probably said we're Christian or some of that, you know? So right. it's, it's like Christians and, and Muslims who don't. Exactly. And, yeah. And it's like a, Orthodox Jews who don't do it. Exactly. So I'm saying as a, as, as a kid, I, me going around to the houses, I'm like, oh man, it's, it's one of these hardcore Christian types. Oh man, these guys are lame. You know what I'm saying? So right. Now you're now you're the lame Christian esque or uh, Abrahamic faith type person, but you're not a Christian. You don't consider yourself a Christian, though. So you know, I'm saying like, you know, like I wonder, like for your for your daughters growing up, like your parents put you in um, into some kind of what you said Baptist church. What can you? Yeah, do? so what? I was I was raised up in the Baptist church yeah. and I went to Catholic school. Yeah, I'm saying I'm saying hypothetically. I mean. Obviously, this world's not gonna last forever, but I'm just saying hypothetically. Like, uh -huh. have you ever thought about that? Like, where where would you put your children to learn, or would you teach them yourself, or how would that work? We we teach our our, our spiritual my children's spiritual education mm -hmm. comes from us, and our family. You know, if we if we were to put it like this, um, are you familiar with um, the uh, spiritual belief systems of the um, early Egyptians? So I understand that that Christianity came from ancient Egypt and things like that. I know, you know, I know that Horus is Jesus and Isis is Mary and all that stuff. We're in line with that belief system. But I'm I'm just asking out of pure curiosity. How exactly would you convey that to a child at well, we the ages of? We've been doing that with our <laughs> elders. We 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 explain to her that you know you'll see images on television of God being a man or of Jesus, but we want you to understand that you can't have a male without a female. And that's the, that's the, 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 uh, that's, you know, a major, major key, a major component to, um, uh, Egyptian, uh, uh, spiritual practices or spirituality. Gotcha. And so how, how old is your oldest out of curiosity? She is six. Gotcha. So how, how is that? How is that working though? How 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 do you think she's taken to it? Um, she's taken to it really well. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that it makes sense to her. Yeah. And we also we also teach her the the main component is that you live your life, you know, cleanly and righteously and faithfully and prayerfully. Now, a lot of you know, a lot of people misunderstand that I'm you know, you may not be a Christian or Muslim or Jewish, that means that you're an atheist and you don't pray. Oh no, no, no. To the contrary, you're in a constant state of prayer. Because you you because it, you're ever conscious of the fact that every every step you take, every move you make, every word you utter is being judged, and that there is a day of judgment, and that you will either be able to pass on to the 
uh, spiritual dimension to the world, to the ancestral homeland, and you can become an ancestor, or there will be certain death. Your soul will be destroyed. And that's going to happen on the day of judgment. Mm-hmm. And it's clearly, it's clearly, you, and you, you, you said that you know about that, and it's clearly written. Yeah, I understand it. But, but, I'm, but I'm wondering, like, what, like the, the, the correlation between Christianity and ancient Egyptian, you know, you know, the ancient magician mythos is, I understand as an adult, but I'm wondering, like, how do you convey that to a child? Because do you, I mean, I, I don't think you can take the Bible completely out of it. You're know trying to say, like, how do you, how do you? Oh, no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Because uh, I'm going to tell you something. Yeah. I read Psalms regularly because yeah. there's power in the Psalms. There is, there is some real power in the Psalms. Yeah, okay, I, I, I read that. that regularly. My, my thing, I'm just, I'm just curious to understand. I am not going to understand. I am not yeah. a parent. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. So I'm just curious to understand how how you managed to bring all this years of this you know this giant time frame all into one thing for a six-year-old to understand to the degree that she can understand like is i'm saying is the is like you know when you say a prayer how how is it directed for example well i say i say i say um you know just to keep it simple Mm -hmm. i say god but you know she understands that when i say god i mean you know you know, our creator, our sustainer, mm-hmm. the creator of, of everything that is in existence, both good and evil. Okay. God created everything, both good and evil. Let's make that clear for, for anybody out there who doesn't know it. You know, a lot of people think that, you know, there's a war between God and the devil. And, you know, and my thing is like, if you are really a faithful person and you really believe in God, then there is no war. God has no competition. God created both good and both evil. That's just the way it is. Um, and so, you know, I pray, you know, and I, you know, ask God for blessings and, and, you know, thanking, you know, God for another day and having, thanking God for my children, um, you know, praying that, um, you know, we are protected, that our loved ones are protected. We pray, we, we pray for people that we see on the news. We pray for everybody in the whole world. We extend our love and we extend our prayers to everybody. We don't discriminate in who we pray for because we make it clear that, you know, the creator, you know, even though here we may have enemies as human beings, God created each and every one of us. God created each and every one of us. And so we pray for everyone. We pray for all. We are very honest um with her and how we communicate that we do it in small doses but we make it very very clear she even asked these questions Mm -hmm. she says to me you know mommy am i going to become an ancestor and i said yes you are and i said to her again i say to her again the key to that is you know living a clean living a clean and righteous life when you become an adult and you get married and you have your children you be a good mother you mother your children you put your family first. You know, you, you take care of your home. You be a good and righteous, upstanding person. You don't tell lies. You tell the truth. You be honest. You know, these okay. things, you know, we, these lessons that we impart, and you, be, you remain faithful. You remain faithful to God. And that faith is um, um, constantly knowing and understanding that everything that you are, everything that you have comes from one source. And it's to that source that you'll return to. Understood. Yeah. I mean, if, if, if I may, I agree with most of that. If, if, if you would allow me to try and bring a, a different, a slightly different twist to it from my understanding. Sure. Um, so in the Egyptian pantheon, there is a, a God uh, that's called Tehuti. You've heard of him, right? He was supposedly Absolutely. a God that walked on earth. Um, and he, and he gave, he gave these, um, these seven um, laws or principles that um, late, later his name became Hermes to the Greeks. And um, so they, they, they call them the seven hermetic principles. Have you ever heard of those before? Yes, I have. Okay. So basically, like my understanding is kind of like a, kind of like a hermetic Gnostic understanding. We're basically, um, or, I guess, or I guess you could say esoteric Christian Gnostic. They're very similar. But basically, my understanding is that we were created in a, pl- in a place of perfection where there was no good or evil, right? Mm-hmm. And that we were given something called free will, which allowed us to do whatever we wanted to do. Right. Um, and, um, 
you know, they're eventually somebody took that free will that was given to them and they decided they wanted, they wanted to create their own worlds and, and rule it as if, as if they were gods in that world, if that makes any sense. You know, uh -huh. this is, so that was, that was in the, the Gnostic Christian understanding that that would be like, um, like the, 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 the creation, the creation of the matrix. If you want to use the matrix movie, I like to, I like to use that reference, you know? Right. And, Absolutely. um, and so there is, there is the God, which is the, the true creator, which is the, the, you know, which, which we are actually are experiencing ourselves. Does that make sense? Yes. And then, and then there is the God that created the world, which is the, the God, which the Gnostics understand as the Demiurge, which is basically the forces that try and keep this, this planet vibrating in fear because it understands that the, the universe that it created had a beginning Therefore, it will have an end. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So that duality beca be became into existence based upon what the Christians call the original sin, which was basically our decision to use our free will to enter. Eventually, it was going to happen. I'm trying to say, like the the whole concept of free will. It eventually someone was going someone was going to eat that apple. I'm trying to say, and so that and so the 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 pro the byproduct of that is us now on Earth, you know, having to experience ourselves in this world, and so. Right the a, a higher understanding of the um the law the 42 negative confessions of my aunt would yes. be that it says you know i have not poisoned the water i have you know i have not you know committed adultery i have not committed murder i have not this and that and it goes on you know ad finitum right? right the whole point of it is the higher understanding of it is you haven't done it because this world's an illusion uh-huh does that make sense Meaning that, <laughs> meaning that Neo in the Matrix, the Matrix is just a program. Does that make sense? When Neo wakes up from right. the Matrix, he realizes that that shit never actually happened, did it? Right. I understand what you got. So, so what I'm saying is we're having this conversation right now, uh -huh. right? But in reality, this conversation never happened in a sense. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because so in the, yeah, so in the Hermetic, in the hermetic philosophy, there it says, um, there's an axiom that says basically, um, all truths, it talks about um, polarity or paradoxes. It says that like um, all truths about half truths, right? Uh huh. So it's like meaning that in, in, a, in an illusionary world, you know, it's like I, I played a game. I played a game today, right? Called Smite. And in that, in that game, I was a god. And I'm in that game and I'm, you know, I'm throwing spirit balls and I'm doing all kinds of things in the game and I'm having fun and I'm getting all emotional about it, right? And I'm getting mad and people are raging at me. But did that game actually ever happen? Right. Does that make sense? I understand. So, so, but, a, so a dream, a dream is what we're experiencing, but the dream actually never happened. The point I'm trying to say is that by 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 being righteous in that, by what I believe, um, by exerting God's will, which is I I feel is, uh, you know, love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. You right. you allow your soul to be in alignment with God's will, which 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 will help to mold your your humanity in a way where you will eventually experience less pain and begin to begin to live in peace and harmony with 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 which with, with, right. with god's will but i have a question yeah, why sure. did that all happen? why did why did that happen why was why was that why why was the matrix created in the first place if we're in the matrix why yes. was it created yes. because eventually we're living in a place we're living in a, a place with with of, of perfection right Right. Eventually, we both know that if I'll put you this way, if given it's straight, it's if you you you've seen the Matrix movie, right? Of I've several times. <laughs> so in in the movie, it says itself. He's like, you know, the first Matrix was per perfect, but what we realize is that people didn't. It says that we lost thousands of crops. People didn't like something about the human nature. Doesn't it, it doesn't appreciate. You know what I'm trying to say? It doesn't appreciate what it had until, until it's gone. You know what I'm trying to say? Right. Yeah. Um, so there's that aspect of it where, I mean, that, that could go for anything. I mean, how, how often do we appreciate what we have until it's gone? That's just, that's just, that's, right. a, that's just so, the nature of, of, of people, unfortunately. Right. And so we, so this, this matrix was created and we're in it. And, to prove and, and, and we needed a test, right? We're here to prove yeah. that we truly love God. Does that make sense? So let me ask you something. Sure. Is God perfect? Yes. Is God perfect? God is perfect. So why, would God, so why would God create imperfect beings? Us. God didn't create imperfect beings. That's what I'm trying to tell you. The matrix was not created by God, right? No, no, no. Us. We are, we are not perfect. And so that's why we're in the matrix. 
so that we can prove that we belong in the in in God's perfect God's perfect realm, right? But God created us. So then why did God create us? But here's you know, what I'm saying. Perfect? Yeah, but God created what we're saying us is not us. The us that we were talking about is the the, the matrix avatar which passes away, right? The only right. thing that is eternal and true is the soul. Uh -huh. That's what the God we're talking the perfect God created. The God, which is the creator of the matrix, created the created the, the universe, which our souls are encapsulated in. Does that make sense? There's a difference. I am, okay. I understand that. So then, you know, God, the, you know, the true perfection, the, the you know, all powerful, all knowing. Yes. Be, right. That created everything. Do you believe that that nothing happens in creation ever without God allowing it to happen or willing it to happen? We had free will before the world was created. All I'm saying is that right. you have to make a distinction when you say God created good and evil. No, God, the 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 God that would that in, in the in the Hermetic philosophy we we you know we would describe God as the causeless cause, right? That is love. It it doesn't right. have a it does not have a cause, right? We the we us being a souls in encompassing a human body, we have free will. Right to give to have a cause, whether that cause is to return to to that place of love and and, and peace, and free from duality and pain, or whether to stay right. in a world where where we where we inf, you know inflate our egos based upon what we have in an illusion. Absolutely, and I I feel you on that one hundred percent, and I totally understand what you mean. Mm -hmm. But my question is, why would God allow it to happen in the first place? If there was no free will then me and you would never be separate. There would be no, there'd be no distinction. There would be no creation. There'd be no creativity. There'd be, we'd just be all one giant hive mind without free will. Does that make sense? There would be no such thing as life or expression at all. If there was but, no individual that, will. Does that make sense? That, that free will landed us in the matrix though. We had a choice to land ourselves in the matrix. Okay. So I'm just, saying, I'm just trying to say that it's like you can't, free will is a gift. You know what I'm trying to say? Right. That you that we that we all have and how we choose to use it is our choice on earth, meaning there is no God that reigns over us that says you you oh th you know you this is bad, this is good. You can do whatever the fuck you want to do here on on this planet Earth. You know what I'm trying to say? That's why I said and that and that's why I said that God did create both good and evil because God created us with the ability to have free will. We can choose to do right, or we can choose to do bad. I hear what you're saying. But God made that capacity within us. Um, I, 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 I hear what you're saying, but I'm gonna I'm gonna say that God gave us free will, and man, right. or, or, or we chose. You know, what I'm trying to say we chose. The story in the Christian philosophy is that there was a group of beings that were angels that decided they were going to conspire to make man in their image and their likeness. Right. So the Bible's a little confused. The Bible's a little confusing, and then the early Christian or Gnostic thought. The God that created the world is is the devil. You know what I'm trying to say? Meaning that Absolutely. if if we if we came to a, pl a place of perfection and God saying, "Hey, don't eat of that 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 apple because it's going to bring you into this world," then why would that same God create the world? So the point of, and, and make man in His image and after His likeness, right? So right. the point I'm trying to make is is that you have to. There's two gods: the hidden God, the hidden Son within you, the soul, and then there is Ra, the creator of the world, who who was the the one who swallowed up. The rest of the gods and entrap them in this world. Does that make sense? Uh -huh. So there's the greater okay. there's the greater light of the world, and then there's a lesser light of your soul, right? Right. So that that's 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 the, that's the only that's the one distinction I have. I'm trying to make because out of love for you, just like you have love and passion to help others, I wanted to make that distinction for you because it's important to make that distinction. You uh -huh. know what I'm trying to say? Right. This this world when you're going out and you're trick or treating in Halloween. This there's this world has a the, the greater light of the world is saying this is fun. Look at look at they have the candy, sweets, sex, you know, pornography, you know, all there's all kinds of things out here to stimulate the body, right? Which right. is a, which is a, which is a product of the original sin and the the beings that rule this world or the demiurgs as the Gnostics call them, you would just call them in the and that you just call them the devil in Christianity, but it's a group it's a group of beings that created this world. God, I'm gonna say it again, God. God mm -hmm. did not create this world. Right. I God, you, that's, that's a huge thing. God did not create this world. 
right? This world no, is I've not. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, exactly. So, exa- say, yeah. God did not create this world, yes. but God allowed the creation of the world to happen. God gave us free, right? God, God gave us free will. And a group of beings use their free will to create this world. It had nothing to do exactly. with that. Exactly. So God is a causeless, exactly. a causeless cause. Mean. When you give God, when you give God, which is perfect, that's why I'm saying that's why God is perfect because he's a causeless cause, meaning he doesn't have, the God I'm talking about is perfect. Uh-huh. He does not have a cause other than love itself. Does that make sense? I I no, I understand I understand what you mean. Yes. I understand exactly what you mean. Gotcha. I see what you mean. Yeah. Um so the so so, so there so there's God the causeless cause, right? That God comes back in the form of a man through Christ, right? Uh-huh. So the, or or Horus, you know what I'm trying to say, etc. Right. That that or Neo in the Matrix, if you will. Okay. Right. The only only one thing that I had a problem with you saying is that the whole like God created good and evil it, when, when the, the, the difference is the only difference is, is that i'm saying that god literally and this is what christ says in the bible that because in the bible there are people that come to christ and say that christ you're perfect and christ says no i'm not perfect he, he, christ says only god is perfect per, and when i say perfect i mean actually perfect actually perfect meaning it doesn't it's just love you am trying to say and it had no cause so the point is is that we are imperfect because we are truth and falsehood strangely mixed. Our bodies are programmed to survive, right? Yeah. And so our bodies are, 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 are not much different than the animals drive. You know what I'm trying to say? They're programmed, they're programmed by the first law of nature, which is survival. And to survive, right. we do evil things, right? That's right. But the soul's will is to serve God and is, and is, and is to love, Right. That's and, it, right. and it's to return to return back to that place which you're calling the the realm of the ancestors, which is really just you know what some people call heaven. You know what I'm trying to say? Right. So that yeah. so that so that's that's the that's the, the 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 dilemma that we're in. And like to go back to the topic, like every every you know year, you know, you're saying as a mother that you're you're faced with a, a well, you're not really faced with it because you've already chosen that your that your that your children are not going to celebrate. Absolutely, there's no Halloween. dilemma here. Yeah, it's gotcha. But for some people, there is a dilemma. You realize, right? And what it is is they're they're again they're presented with with that with serving the will of their ch- ch- listen listen closely serving the will of their children's animalistic <laughs> nature. You know what I'm trying to say because guess what ch- ch- most children want to do what the herd does. You know what I'm trying to say that's no absolutely <laughs> it's not and it's and it's not, nothing nothing necessarily wrong with that again like. The soul, this you know, like uh, the Bible talks about, you know, the, the Bible t- t- talks about human beings as like sheep. You know what I'm trying to say? Meaning that generally speaking, um, you know, a mind has to be developed. You know what I'm trying to say? Absolutely, yeah. Because the child in the child, the ego isn't fully developed yet, and so they're easily influenced. Exactly. That's just a fact. Exactly. But in, and unfortunately, you have some adults who 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 whose egos <laughs> had never developed, and so they're you know forty something years old and easily influenced. But that's I guess that's another conversation. No, that that's that's exactly it. You know, um, <laughs> I wanna I wanna like re- read read this kind of th- th- this this thing I wrote, uh, this post I wrote because I thought it was pretty good. I don't know I thought you know I, hopefully you liked it. Basically, like I said, um, I talked about my, my experience when I, during trick or treating. You know, and, and it was just one time out of, you know, maybe, you know, how many times I go to retreat as a kid, you know, probably like what, you know, like eight times, nine times, 10 times, who knows, you know, it was probably, you know, a lot of times, but I had this, right. this white guy expose himself to me, you know, while he's passing out candy, you know, it was, it was a real, dis- I felt, I just, it was, it made me sick to my stomach, not even thinking about it, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but like, I, you know, I was, I, what I wrote, I wrote basically like, you know, about ch- children and that, like. Even even our children come in this world to experience pain. I'm trying to say, and to learn lessons. You know, they 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 come into a world of good and evil, of good and evil, just like we did to 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 learn right from wrong and things like that. You know, um, all right. we, all we can do. I wrote basically my advice was all we can do is teach them teach them ourselves what we what we are what right from wrong is. You know, and I, right. and, I and I posed the question. I said, um, does a child yet have the ability to be in the world but not of it? intuitively knowing right from wrong and i said uh the seed of the seed of god within most people's children is weak and i said i really said the people the seed of god within most people period is weak and you have to know your children some children need time for that seed to strengthen some some children will never be strong as children or adults and will never know god and will never know faith 
And I said, and it's, and it's, and it's your job, or I should say our job to monitor, to monitor that seed. Uh, I mean, to, go ahead. Uh-huh. I was going to yeah. say basically to, to, to know its potential and to nurse it until it's able to reach, to reach that potential, to be vigilant, to educate and to fend off any insects or parasites that may prey upon that seed until it's strong enough to fend for themselves. And I give a quote from the Bible that says, be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, um, uh, as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour in uh, Peter five, eight. But, um, what do you think no, of that? You're absolutely correct. You're, you're absolutely correct. And that's the reason, that's the reason why we homeschool our children. Yeah. We don't, we don't send them to their schools. We have no desire to do that. And if we did do that, it would be at an age where their, uh, uh, egos are fully intact. They're fully developed and they have a strong, strong sense an unshakable sense of themselves, who they are, their identity is solid. Mm-hmm. That is the only time that I would ever consider putting them in one of their schools. But wow. that's correct. Absolutely not. So what's that like homeschooling, man? I, I've always been curious to know what that's like. I mean, you, you're, I mean, uh-huh. how does that work? I mean, like in this society, generally speaking, um, because the wages are so low, most, most of the time, both parents have to work. Is that the case right. for you and your husband? No. Okay. So how, t- tell me how this works. Please explain it. Break it down to me. What do you want to know? You how we how we work the finances out? How I teach the children? Like who works? Who stays at home? Like how does it work? How does it work? My husband works. Yeah. Um, because he has the potential to earn the most. Yeah. So he works, and we just we just budget the heck out of the money. Mm-hmm. We don't we don't go on you know cruises and you know I don't want to reveal my husband husband's profession. Of course, but yeah. I will say that based on his profession, people would expect us to be going on you know, to, to, to be going on cruises every year and spending the winters in the tropics and things like that. Mm-hmm. We don't do that. Gotcha. So you're we saying you, 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 sacrif- mm-hmm. you sacrifice some worldly things for the sake of your children. I don't really see it as a sacrifice, but yeah, sacrifice, um, you know, certain things, you know, we don't, we've never been, you know, the type to want to do anything like that anyway. So it's not a struggle for us. Understood. Um, but we budget the heck out of our money. We buy what we need. And, you know, occasionally we'll, we'll splurge and get little things. But the priority, you know, the focus on our, the focus of our lives, the priority is, you know, raising up these children. Mm-hmm. And we have to be on the same page. And part of that is being able to say no to certain things because your money could be, you know, better used elsewhere. So that's how we take care of it um, financially. You know, and also, you know, I watch what I spend, you know, as far as grocery shopping and clothes shopping for my children and things like that. And as far as their schooling is concerned, I meet my children where they're at. For example, you know, based on my daughter's age, I don't force a particular thing on her because she is a certain age. I meet her where she's at. Whatever she's ready to do, she'll do. Mm -hmm. So with that said, um, you know, I have her on a, at a grade level level she's at least two grade levels ahead um, because that's what she wants to do. She's communicated to me. That's what she wants to do and she's ready for it. And so that's what we do. Um, I don't hold her back, you know, in that way um, because, because of her intellectual capacity, I don't hold her back. I don't want her to be bored. I don't want her to develop a disdain for education because that happens a lot with children who are very intelligent. They are forced in a situation um, you know, you know, in a, in a classroom being taught certain materials that, you know, they're, they're ahead and they're bored and they don't want to be there. And so was that you, was that you? Yes. Okay. Uh, (laughs) It sounded like it was you. (laughs) Yeah. And so what happens is they shut down. Um, they draw into themselves or they act out. Next thing you know, you get a call from teacher behavioral problems. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to hear none of that. I'm not having it. So, you know, the decision was that this is what we were going to do for our children. And I love every minute of it. They love it. We do activities outside of the home, but our, you know, my, the, the enculturation happens at home. I, my job as their mother is to, incul- is to educate them and enculturate them. They're, my children are not going to have this, culture eurocentric culture is what and not just eurocentric culture this pop culture gotcha consumer culture yeah you know 
that's it's beneath it's beneath us it's beneath me it's beneath my children i my my children that will have nothing to do with it wow oh. they're lucky to have a mother like you man oh thank you you're welcome i'm like oh man like oh, i wish i had you as my mom <laughs> mm -hmm. oh man you sound like a kick-ass mom oh my goodness wow you're really passionate about this it's so it's so refreshing well, to hear I'm that I'm I'm that crazy mom down the street whose kids you don't mess with. <laughs> Everybody has me in the neighborhood. That crazy lady. Yeah. That's me. Oh my goodness! Wow, that's gorgeous. Thank you. I try, but you know what? I'm gonna tell you something right now. The only way I can do this, the only way that you know my husband and I both can do this, is that you know is we're constantly praying. Yeah. Constantly praying. Constantly aware of where this our ability to do this for our children comes from and we remain ever faithful and ever thankful and you know though you know you know according to what you said in mm. this realm we are not perfect yeah but we strive for it yeah absolutely you know? that's what we try to do that's beautiful sister um hitting about an hour here i mean is there anything you want to close on or or no, I just want to say thank you for um thank you so much for uh, for inviting me. I really uh, appreciate it. I you know I really appreciate the opportunity to share a little bit about um myself, and I'm glad to be a part of the um, Facebook group. I feel like it's a space for you know people like us to just be yes exactly. where we're understood yes you know we can have these conversations yeah and not the side eye. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Let me ask you: did, did you did you ever read my Facebook description of the group by any chance? I absolutely did. That's I did that before I joined. <laughs> what do you think? Is it? It is like I'm thinking to myself: uh, either they're gonna understand it, and no, be, listen, like, go ahead. Listen, who's meant to understand it is gonna understand it. Yeah, so yeah. Don't worry about that. I, I don't worry about it, but I do in a sense. I still have you know, even though I. I'm very spiritual, but I still have an ego. You're trying to say, so, you know, like, Absolutely. So. <laughs> but what's for you is for you, and what's not for it, you is not exactly. For you. And that's the point. I I put it. I'm and get it, and it's gonna be good. Yeah, exactly. I put it up there for, as a, as a barrier to 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 for for people that really because I I want to be able to have conversations of the way like the way the way we're having them. You're trying to say because right, and you know, and I don't, you know, and anybody listening, I don't want anybody, you know, to you know to think that I'm saying that we're somehow you know, superior or above or on this pedestal. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about people who just op just just exist on a different wavelength to be able to have a space to have these conversations and have under other people understand where, where they're coming from and where we can talk about things and debate things, but we're on the same wavelength and we're not we're not getting the side eye and oh well you're weird, you're a freak, what are you talking about? And people who want deeper connections and deeper conversations and who you know aren't just interested in the latest jay-z and beyonce drama video agreed absolutely oh you said about like um us being lofty and on this ivory tower it's 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 about it's really about putting god first in our lives right and it's not, it's not it's not lofty it's just you know it's just it's just a certain kind of awareness that you have and you want to be in the company of other people who are aware of the same thing that's ex that's exactly it you know you in order, you know in order to have in order to have a uh to be alert to be sober like we just said earlier you know you you, ha you have to like you know steel steel sharpen steel you know what I'm trying to say so, so it's like you know it talks about in the bible about the company you keep you know you gotta make sure you're keeping the company of people that stimulate you so you, so you don't like if you're not building you're destroying so that's right it's pretty much it, Sister Will. Thank you, thank you for building with me. It's been a pleasure and an honor, and maybe we'll have have you again back on here some other time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Not a problem, Sister. Peace. Take care. Bye. Peace, everyone. Hope you enjoyed the podcast. I just published my first blog post on our website, AfroEmpath.com, entitled Household Life Hacks for Empaths and Highly Sensitive People. Basically, it's a couple of things you can buy to help you just kind of deal with the um, EMF or electro magnetic smog that we deal with on a daily basis. If you like it, feel free to share or leave me a comment below. Peace.